Welcome back to an exciting new season of Weather Watch, Millersville University's exclusive weather news program. I'm your host, Curtis Silverwood. First off, we are very excited to improve the show for our loyal viewers. With that said, let's start off by getting you caught up with the weather that made headlines during the winter break in your weather in 60 seconds. Heavy snow in 50 years in the Middle East, storms and flooding in England, and a dry spout in the West, all part of your weather in 60 seconds. Heading over to the Middle East, Iran has experienced its heaviest snowstorm in 50 years. Almost seven feet of snow fell in the area, trapping about 500,000 people in their villages in northern Iran. Temperatures dropped near zero degrees Fahrenheit and 11,000 people were put in emergency housing. Moving north to the UK, where they endured heavy storms and wind up to 70 miles per hour. The storms brought severe flooding that caused widespread flood damage and made traffic come to a standstill. Around 70,000 people were left without electricity. Flying over to the US, California has been in severe drought, with reservoir levels dropping, snowpack almost non-existent, and many restrictions on water usage has been imposed. Around 17 small towns are left with low amounts of water that the state may need to truck in supplies. The drought has affected many farms and livestock as well. The dry spout seems to have no end in sight. And that'll do it for this edition of Your Weather in 60 Seconds. So far each season, we have brought you severe storms, nor'easters, and hurricanes in the Weather Watch Top 5. What will our new Top 5 specialist, Kelly Livingston, count down this season? Take a look. Your Weather Watch Top 5 is back, and we are counting down our Top 5 floods in the United States, determined by the price tag on the damage of which they caused. Our first flood is associated with some very severe storms. Number five on our list is the North California storms of 1995. El Nino and a sea surface temperature anomaly in SSTA were in effect during 1995, which brought disastrous rainstorms throughout California. In January, the warm Pacific current spawned an unusual series of storms, which caused heavy precipitation across the state and resulted in record-breaking floods. Some of the most intense storms occurred during the week of January 8th and produced an average of 13 inches of rain over most of Northern California. In total, 24 inches of precipitation was recorded for that week. Flooding was significant throughout the region from January 9th through the 14th, hitting hard in the Sacramento area. Some flooding was controllable by diversions and flood control reservoirs. In March, the SSTA weakened and caused more severe storms and flooding in the northern part of the state. The State Department of Food and Agriculture estimated crop and livestock losses at $303 million. 2,500 acres of farmland were submerged in water near the small town of Pajaro. Due to the severe flooding, 5,000 residents of Castroville were ordered to evacuate and two twin bridges of Interstate 5 collapsed south of Fresno. Overall, 27 lives were claimed and $4.29 billion in damages were caused by the floods. Reporting for Weather Watch, I'm student meteorologist Kelly Livingston. Thanks Kelly. This winter has been one of the coldest in 20 years, but why? Weather Watch's very own Tara Minnie investigates to find out the reason behind the cold. How has the cold affected Millersville students? I had to spend a lot of money getting warmer stuff. Well, I make her drive me to all my classes because it's been so cold. Places have been getting canceled. It's just hard to get up in the morning and go out in the cold. So far this winter, we've experienced bitter temperatures accompanied with frigid wind chills in much of the U.S. Many of us haven't felt these record-breaking lows since the cold snap in 1994. Taking a closer look, we see that this unbearable cold might not be as rare as we think. January 1994, that's really the benchmark for cold here in the Lancaster area. You know, as a native of Lancaster, I had never experienced the, the cold that we saw that winter. In fact, one morning we got down to 18 below zero, and there was, I think, five mornings uh, in all that we had sub-zero readings. We had, you know, several days that we were 10 to 18 degrees below zero for low temperatures. Uh, this outbreak, yes, we got below zero five days, um, but four of those days it was minus one. 
this one doesn't come close to matching the caliber of cold that we had in uh, January 94. Polar vortex is a term used by news platforms to describe the abnormal temperatures. We asked Millersville students around campus what they knew about the topic through media. Um, unfortunately, I know nothing about it. I've never heard of it. Yeah, no, nothing. <laughs> from what I've heard, it's just cold air that's coming down from the North Pole and it's just kind of circling over the U.S. and America. That's really all I know. The polar vortex, that's more of a, a technical textbook meteorology term. It, I've never heard it used in mainstream media until this winter. And uh, because it just cropped up this winter, people think it's something new. It's the term for the pocket or pool of coldest air in the atmosphere, which on average resides near the North Pole. But as the jet stream undulates and the patterns change week to week, it gets displaced at times away from the North Pole. Um, so nothing unusual there. It's always existed and always will. People have been speculating that these low temperatures are due to climate change. But how does this issue really factor into the colder weather? Well, you have to be careful connecting what we consider to be short-term changes in the weather. For example, the cold temperatures that we are experiencing in many parts of the country to long-term changes, which is what we consider to be climate. Just because we have a few periods of really cold temperatures doesn't mean that we're not seeing the same pattern of warmer winters that we have seen over the past century. So how does climate change connect all of this? A lot of these cold temperatures have to do with the polar vortex. Climate change can potentially affect these large scale patterns. So it can kind of weaken that circulation where the cold air f would come much farther south than it normally would. And that's why we are experiencing these cold temperatures. What we are experiencing isn't out of the ordinary. The polar vortex has always existed. However, this is the first time the media has brought it to our attention to describe the cold weather. Reporting for Weather Watch, I'm student meteorologist Tara Minnie. Thanks, Tara. Well, that wraps up this episode of Weather Watch. Please be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at the addresses shown below. You can also visit our website, meweatherwatch.com, for all of our past episodes and more information about the show. For all of you at home, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.